For 20 years, there was a singular, unbreakable rule in the American wireless industry. If you lived in the city, you had choices. But if you lived in the country, on a farm, or just outside the suburbs, you had one option. Verizon Wireless. They were the undisputed king of coverage. The, can you hear me now, guys? But as we head into 2026, I have to share something that might feel uncomfortable for longtime Verizon loyalists. That rule is dead. The November 2025 network reports are out, and they don't just show T-Mobile catching up. They show a gap in speed and usability that is becoming frankly embarrassing for the former king. Today, we are breaking down exactly why your Verizon phone might feel slower than ever, why T-Mobile is winning the rural war, and what this means for your wallet and your connection in 2026. Welcome back to the Mobile Services Center. I want to start by looking at the raw numbers because they paint a picture that marketing commercials try to hide. According to the latest data from OpenSignal, released just this month, the average overall download speed for a T-Mobile user in the U.S. is now sitting at 177.5 megabits per second. Compare that to Verizon, which is averaging just 46 megabits per second. We are not talking about a 10 or 20% difference here. We are looking at a performance gap where one carrier is nearly four times faster than the other in daily mixed usage. You might be thinking, speed isn't everything. I just need a signal. And for a long time, that was Verizon's fortress. But let's talk about what having a signal actually means in late 2025. If you have one bar of LTE that can't load a Google Maps route or a 5G icon that buffers a YouTube video, do you really have coverage? This is where the availability penalty comes in. The data shows that T-Mobile users are connected to 5G, specifically high-speed mid-band 5G, between 65 and 70% of the time. Verizon users? You are often spending half your day on LTE or a low-band 5G connection that struggles to outperform 4G. So why is this happening? Why is the massive giant Verizon struggling to keep up? It comes down to physics and a decision made nearly a decade ago. It's the battle of 2.5 gigahertz versus C-band. Think of radio waves like light. Low frequencies travel far but carry very little data. High frequencies carry tons of data, but can't travel through a paper bag. T-Mobile acquired Sprint specifically to get their hands on 2.5 GHz spectrum. This is the Goldilocks frequency. It travels miles, penetrates walls, and still carries gigabit speeds. Verizon, on the other hand, had to wait for an auction to buy C-Band, which operates at 3.7 GHz. Here is the problem. 3.7 GHz is a significantly higher frequency. Physics dictates that it fades faster. To cover the exact same rural farm with high-speed internet, Verizon needs to build nearly twice as many towers as T-Mobile does. And building towers takes time and billions of dollars. This is why you might see a T-Mobile user in rural Illinois or Ohio pulling 300 megabits per second while a Verizon user next to them is stuck on a congested LTE tower. This coverage shift has birthed a new phenomenon we call the rural renaissance. Let's look at Wyoming, one of the hardest states to cover. In late 2025, T-Mobile users there are spending 60% of their time on 5G. Verizon users in the same mountains? Less than 10%. That is a massive difference in quality of life. This leads us to the biggest disruption in the market, home internet. Because T-Mobile's signal travels so far, they have effectively become the poor man's Starlink. If you are in a rural area where cable doesn't run, you used to be stuck with Viasat or HughesNet. Now, T-Mobile home internet is delivering 100 to 300 megabits per second for 50 bucks a month. While Starlink is still king for the ultra-remote wilderness, T-Mobile is dominating the rural residential market because the hardware is free and the monthly cost is less than half of Starlink's. Verizon has a home internet product too, and it is very fast. But because of those physics we discussed, it is available to far fewer homes. 
I also need to address the gamers and the tech enthusiasts, because there is a technical architectural battle happening called standalone versus non-standalone. T-Mobile has moved to standalone 5G. This means your phone connects directly to a 5G core. It improves battery life and lowers latency to around 46 milliseconds. Verizon is still largely relying on non-standalone architecture in many areas, where the phone has to anchor to an LTE signal first. This adds lag. If you are trying to play Call of Duty Mobile or stream cloud games, that extra 10 to 20 milliseconds of jitter makes a difference. Now before you rush out to switch, we have to talk about device hardware, specifically if you are looking at the iPhone 17 lineup. Reports suggest the lower tier models are using Apple's own proprietary modem, while the Pro models stick with Qualcomm. Early testing suggests Apple's modem struggles a bit more at the edge of cell coverage, especially with the complex band aggregation T-Mobile uses. So if you are switching to T-Mobile for rural coverage, I highly recommend sticking with a pro-tier iPhone or a flagship Samsung Galaxy to ensure you have a modem capable of holding on to that signal when you are miles from the tower. Is Verizon done? Absolutely not. They are currently buying fiber providers like Frontier and acquiring Spectrum from US Cellular to patch these holes. They are densifying their network, but that takes time, likely another 12 to 18 months before rural customers feel the relief. Here is the bottom line for your 2026 strategy. If you are an adventurer who spends weeks in the deep wilderness, in canyons or national parks, Verizon, or a satellite connection, is still your safety net. Their geographic footprint for basic calls and texts is still massive. But if you are looking for usable, high-speed broadband that lets you work, stream, and game in the places where people actually live and travel, the crown has passed. T-Mobile is the new speed king, and honestly, it's not even close. If you found this deep dive helpful, make sure you subscribe to the Mobile Services Center so you don't overpay for yesterday's network performance. And now it is the end of our episode today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Mobile Service Center, and press like if you really like the video. See you in the next video.